Hello guys, finally the time has come. Today I'm delivering that overclocking video of the Intel Core i9 9900K 8 core CPU I promised. Attention, I did maybe exaggerate a little bit in the video title, because nothing is catching on fire here. However, one shouldn't underestimate thermals here. After all, we are talking of almost 90 degrees Celsius at max, with an AIO liquid cooler by the way. I managed to take this beast up to 5 GHz, more was impossible alone the temperatures wouldn't allow for more. But now there's the question, how much extra performance do 5 GHz get us, since the turbo clock is already at 5 GHz, you know. But it needs to be said, that aren't 5 GHz across all cores at stock, other than with today's overclock. Juicy 5 GHz on all cores. In my case, that turned out to be a bit of a challenge. As for the motherboard, admittedly, I'm not using one of those super duper crazy overclocking motherboards out there, but to be fair, a board in this class as the ASRock Z390 Extreme 4 is nothing one should be ashamed of. This is not a cheap board actually. But sure, in terms of overclocking the 9900K, we potentially could be looking at slightly better results with more expensive Z390 boards. Alright, now to get one thing out of the way, I once again have to remind you, my results or rather over clocking success or even failure does not necessarily have to apply to you. Your mileage may vary. As we know, overclocking depends on the silicon lottery. Some chips overclock really well and with others you just have bad luck. Just for reference, under load at stock settings my 9900K according to CPU-Z boosts up to 4.7 GHz at 1.264 volts. Now in order to get those 5 GHz on all the cores manually, I went into the BIOS styled in a multiplier of 50 for all cores, didn't touch any AVX offset setting, and I didn't work with a fixed voltage, but rather offset voltage. This allows the CPU at idle to not operate at the fixed voltage constantly, which could potentially have negative impacts on power consumption and temperatures, and thus maybe even lifespan. That's the reason why I always prefer the offset mode. An additional 5 millivolts were enough in my case, and I left all that load line calibration on auto. It was not needed, but that can differ from board to board. Anyway, I've got my 9900K stable at 5 GHz across all 8 cores at a voltage of about 1.344 volts. I wouldn't go any higher because I already had trouble keeping the temperatures in check with that voltage. It does however run completely stable and I did test for several hours to really make sure. And no, I didn't just stress test with Cinebench as some like accusing me of doing. But oh well, the majority of you guys only wants to know one thing, how much more power does one get with an overclocked 9900K?
Alright, one thing's for sure, I didn't have bad luck with my i9-9900K, since most trusted reviewers do state they too consider 5GHz to be the max the 9900K can achieve. So there's not a lot happening with overclocking here, unfortunately. To me it seems the architecture has reached its max. Sure, there are exceptions that speak of 5.1GHz, but let's be honest, it doesn't make a big difference either. The limiting factor simply is the temperature, and keeping those temps in check even even with a decent AIO liquid cooler can be quite the challenge. And one should think the 9900K finally features a soldered IHS. But when it comes down to temperatures it needs to be said that not everyone actually deals with the same results. Apparently that's depending on the motherboard a fair bit. Which in turn means not all of us benefit from the full potential of performance the i9 CPU has to offer. But that I even mean stock settings. Either way what can I say about the performance? gain. Well, yes, something has changed at least. Sadly, we only really get to notice that performance boost in synthetic tests or in aspects that heavily rely on multi-threading, so Cinebench, rendering and the likes. But not even then in each and every case. But all in all that overclock did disappoint me to be perfectly honest. Because when looking at the results I got in games, we do see the average frame rate hardly did increase. Most of the time it remains unchanged compared to what we've seen at stock. Just to let you know, MCE, so multicore enhancement, was disabled in case you wondered. Something that bothers me with this overclock is that those 1% lows have actually gotten a bit worse in a couple of game titles. In others, however, we see a slight increase, which turned out to have nothing to do with the voltage. I checked that. So long story short, I wouldn't advise you to go and overclock the i9-9900K. I know for a fact there are people out there praising this CPU to be some kind of god among CPUs with fantastic efficiency and for being so overclocking friendly. But in all honesty, I don't see much of that here. If you were to ask me, I'd say leave the 9900K at stock settings and do not overclock. Temperatures and power consumption still won't look super duper great compared to Intel's own predecessors or cheaper models, but at least it's a situation that's still manageable. After just a tiny bit of overclocking, the power draw and temperature skyrocket. And when starting to put all those drawbacks against what you actually gain, you only can come to one conclusion, overclocking is not worth it. Except if you like bragging about owning an 8-core that can clock that high, then yes, overclocking fun does look slightly different to me. For instance, the i5-9600K turned out to do quite well. More on that in an upcoming video. But for now, thanks a lot for watching.